okay so today's discussion will be uh, some basic uh, uh, discussion on measurement and measurement systems now the most of the things that will be discussed you have somehow you already know it somehow or you have uh, encountered this uh, while doing different experiments or something however in some with respect to some formal terms we, we will discuss some basics of measurement and measurement systems so starting with what is measurement so you can say that okay, measurement is uh, the comparison between two quantities one is unknown and one is somehow a predefined standard quantity so uh, you know that there are different unit systems available so whenever you're measuring something you have to measure it with respect to that unit system for example uh, for weight you know what is one kilograms for distance you know what is one kilometers so with respect to those standards you actually compare the thing that you have measured and another thing uh, another way of saying it is to be converting any physical parameter that you want to measure into some numerical values and those numerical values will uh, only be meaningful when you associate some unit uh, with that new numerical quantity because the unit will actually uh, uh, represent its characteristics of property so uh, like uh, I said to your other section as well. So as an example, suppose your CR, he mentioned me that I have to take your class from 8.32, suppose 9. So when he mentioned this, I thought that, OK, it is in the morning. But later on, he, he uh, suggested me that uh, actually I meant it to be PM, not AM. So initially he didn't write anything, whether it is AM or PM. So that is why the unit is important because only a numerical quantity doesn't uh, give you any characteristics or property of the quantity that you are representing. Now, <clears throat> in order to get meaningful results from a measurement, like the uh, standard has to be accurately defined and the common standard has to be followed throughout the entire world to uh, eliminate any confusion. Otherwise, in, if in different parts, different standard unit systems are followed, then it, uh, each time a consumer or manufacturer has to do some uh, conversion or has to go through some conversion process, which is really cumbersome. So mostly throughout the entire world, a common standardization is followed. However, still in some parts, some, some common uh, uh, some common measurement uh, terms are used in some parts, but in general, a common standard is followed. Now, the apparatus used for doing the measurement and the methodology which is used, that has to be provable that uh, this process is right if a method methodology which is followed if it is right it is wide, widely accepted otherwise the result someone will present it will not be properly justified and also if someone uses an instrument which is not well accepted that will also not uh, uh, the result generated using that instrument or that process which is not widely accepted that will be uh, uh, not that much significant. Now, uh, significance of measurement. So, two points are highlighted here. The first one it is saying that any new discovery or theory or hypothesis, if you want to propose, then you must have to justify it with respect to some practical experiment. Suppose you are doing any research, you have to give some experimental validation or some experimental data so that that backs your uh, theory or hypothesis in most of the cases reviewers reject the paper if there is no experimental validation so in 
countries like Bangladesh, uh, uh, where we don't have enough opportunity or labs to do experimental analysis, what we do, we try to uh, go for simulation. In in terms of simulation, we we'll try to show that okay, what we are proposing that is correct, but that is not hundred percent justified because unless you implement something experimentally, it is not going to be fully uh, fully uh, justified. So while doing any experimental analysis, you definitely need to use different instruments to different uh, for measuring different uh, quantities. And other than that, the two major functions of all branches of engineering, which is the designing of any equipment or process or proper maintenance or operation of any equipment or process. For that, you definitely need to do continuous measurement of different quantities using different instruments. Now to discuss about different methods of measurement. So in, in, in different books, you'll find the classification in different ways, but in general, uh, a classification can be represented like this, where different methods of measurement can be classified as either indirect form of measurement or direct form of measurement. So what is the indirect form and direct form you can easily suggest from the name. So the indirect form is actually the, the types of measurement that you will do, where if, if the quantity that you, that you want to measure, you cannot measure it directly. Rather, if you measure some other quantities, that will help you to measure the quantity which you need. So for an example, if you want to measure speed, often it is not possible to measure it directly. So you measure the distance first and the time required to travel that distance. So that will, when you know these two quantities, that will be, allow you to calculate the speed. So just for example purpose, I have shown this to you. Now for the direct methods of measurement, which can be classified into two other subsections, deflection type and composition type. Now in direct uh, measurement techniques, you will be able to measure a particular quantity directly using some instrument. So for the deflection type, you can say that the voltmeters, emitters, wattmeters that you use in uh, all you have already used for performing different experiments in your uh, machine lab or electrical circuit lab. So those directly give you the reading of voltage, current, or power in terms of the deflection of the scale. So those can be considered as the deflection type uh, devices. And uh, uh, for these devices, whatever deflection you are getting, that is actually giving you a numerical value. But uh, for some deflection type devices, you might not uh, get uh, uh, a numerical value as your output. However, you might want to determine whether you have obtained a balanced condition or not, such as a galvanometer. So in galvanometer, what we try to do, we want to get the null deflection. So when we obtain the null deflection, we can say that we have obtained the balance condition in the circuit. So these deflection type devices can, can be classified into two types. You can say one is direct deflection and another is null deflection. And the comparison type, this type of, uh, this type of, type of techniques, the unknown quantity is determined by comparing with some standard value of, of a given quantity. Uh, so for example, if you have an object or suppose a string, you want to measure the length of this string. So we often measure it using a ruler or a scale. Suppose the, the scale is uh, uh, of, of one feet. So with respect to this one feet scale, we compare the length of the string and try to determine the exact length of it. And another is the balancing weights. So if we have two plates in a balancing weight, so in one plate we place an unknown object, 
and in a, another plot we put some known weights of known quantities we will try to obtain a balance between the two plates and when the balance is obtained then we uh, conclude that the weight of this unknown object is equal to the sum of the weights which is put on the other side of the scale so these are some simple examples to have an understanding about the direct and indirect methods of measurement which is known for you but representing in terms of some formal terms now uh, or any measurement system or any measuring instrument the different elements which are in general present that can be classified or represented using this, this fundamental uh, block dialogue so depending on the type of application some uh, blocks presented here might be not necessary for that particular of, uh, uh, application or for some application two blocks might be merged together to uh, uh, perform the same task by, by a single device so this sort of thing can happen so in general let me try to discuss the basic block diagram first so normally uh, what our intention is to measure how can it, our intention is to measure some physical quantity such as uh, temperature pressure or intensity of light so these are physical quantities so we we have to sense it somehow then convert it to a form which is suitable for us to do some computations and necessary to uh, display it in a recording system so the first block is the physical system so from the physical system the physical parameter has to be sensed by some primary sensing element so the primary sensing element will detect the change in the physical system and after it has sensed the physical quantity then we have to convert the signal into a desired form using a transducer because uh, the transducer converts signal from one form to another so if we talk about electrical instruments so the purpose of using the transducer would be to convert any form of energy that is uh, uh, at its input side to an equivalent electrical signal which can be in terms of voltage current or uh, change in resistance inductance uh, inductance or capacitance any circuit quantity and that electrical signal might be further processed in the subsequent blocks so after the transducer has uh, uh, provided a converted signal so uh, often it is necessary to pass it through some signal conditioning uh, system because the signal that the transducer is providing is it uh, might be having a very low amplitude so it might be necessary to amplify it or if it is, if it is having a very high amplitude uh, then uh, for the circuitry which is which will be used in the forwarding path for that the amount of uh, voltage amplitude might have to be re reduced or attenuated or if there is some interference and some noise is added to the signal to eliminate that, eliminate that noise some filtering might be necessary so those sort of signal modifications have, will be done in the signal conditioner and after that the signal conditioner will pass the signal to variable conversion element so if there is necessary to convert the variable type then for some system some variable conversion element will be there for example up to this stage if the we are up to this stage if you are having the change in signal in terms of a voltage but in the rest of the portion we need some other form of signal then that will be uh, suppose the change in voltage you want to change it here as change of frequency so some sort of variable conversion element will be necessary to uh, con con uh, to do this conversion now oftentimes it might happen that after up to the signal conditioner our signal is in analog form 
but in the later portions we want to use some digital uh, uh, digital devices or we are going to store the data in a computer so it, it will be necessary to convert our data to and from analog to digital form so that conversion from analog to digital form can be done using some ad converters so that that will be the task of the variable conversion element. so after that is done now this manipulation block its function is actually uh, similar to the signal conditional block which was discussed earlier so after the reconversion of the variable type if it is necessary to uh, modify the signal further so that will be done in, in in this stage and while any amplification filtering or uh, modulation anything is done to the signal it has to be kept in mind that the original information doesn't get lost in the process so both while using any signal conditioner or any manipulation any block for man, any element for data manipulation that thing has to be considered that the original information should not be hampered so after manipulation the modified signal will then be passed through a data transmission system towards data pre presentation elements so this is basically an indicator or a recorder where the data will be stored so for deflection type devices the indicator can be considered to be the pointer moving system for uh, digital devices it can be considered to be the digital display or the data can be also stored in in, in, in a computer system and for the da data transmission uh, it is actually often integrated within a particular instrument and sometimes it is depending on the type of application it, if you want to remotely observe or monitor some process you have to somehow receive the data wirelessly and again after receiving the data you might have to uh, uh, send some actuating signals or control controlling signals to that uh, remote location so the data transmission it can be either wired, wired or wireless or it can be somehow integrated within the within a single instrument so these are the fundamental uh, blocks or elements which normally are present in uh, different uh, 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 different uh, instruments or measurement systems now to have an analogy of this block diagram let us move on to the next slide and observe where something okay uh, so this is actually a, a very simple example maybe it is not a device which can be practically used or it can it will not be practically that much efficient but to have an analogy what was discussed in the previous slide to, for that purpose it might be quite useful so i can say that this is a pressure measuring transducer so uh, i can say that uh, this is a mechanical instrument which will allow us to measure pressure measure pressure of the fluid that is being passed to this chamber to this inlet and the more amount of fluid which will enter this chamber the more pressure it will exert in the piston phase so why a mechanical system is presented over here because it, it will be easier to visualize the different uh, components so the fluid which is uh, entering into this chamber that will exert some pressure and pressure is uh, nothing but force per unit area so you can say that the piston phase will experience some force so at the piston phase the pressure is getting converted to equivalent force and that force is passed through the piston rod to the spring so the spring will ex uh, experience the force and that that will cause the spring to I, 
shrink or expand depending on the amount of fluid. So in this stage, the spring is, con is actually converting the force into a linear motion. And if you look at the diagram, you can see that with the piston rod, a pointer is attached with which can easily move around this paper, which is atta attached with the boundary of this uh, 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 container. So when the pis piston is moving up or down, according to that, the pointer will also move either in the clockwise direction or in the anti-clockwise direction. So when the piston is moving upwards, it causes the pointer to move in clockwise direction. And when the piston is moving downwards, the spring will expand and it will uh, cause the pointer to move in the anti-clockwise direction. And as, if the pointer movement is attached with a scale, which is calibrated to measure pressure. So using taking reading from this scale, we can have some approximation about how much pressure is being generated by the fluid which is entering inside the chamber. So a very simple system. Now in the next slide, the whole process can be shown in terms of this log diagram. So like I was saying, so at this stage, the fluid is exerting some pressure on the piston phase. So the piston phase is experiencing some force and the, that force is actually transmitted through the piston rod towards the spring. So it's, the piston rod is actually also exerting some force on the spring. The spring is converting that force into a uh, linear motion. And then finally, that motion is transferred to the movement of the pointer. And from the scale, the observer can take the necessary reading. Now, uh, uh, comparing to the previous block diagram, which was shown, you can suggest here which, which block indicates uh, or replace which block presented over this basic block diagram. So considering this basic block diagram, what, what, what can you call this one? Anyone? Uh, did you get my question? Sir, can you repeat the question, sir, please? Again. So I was saying that in this block diagram, I have shown you what, what, what are the different types of elements that might be present in a measurement system. So if you compare this block diagram with this one, then the fluid is representing which block of the base fundamental block diagram? Primary sensing element. The first, second one. Fluid is not actually the primary sensing element because uh, it is not sensing something. It is rather the physical system, right? So you can say that it is the physical system. It is not sensing anything. It is suppose uh, the uh, it, you can consider it to be the physical system whose pressure you want to measure. So some other device you have to use to sense the pressure uh, that is uh, being generated by the flow of fluid inside the chamber. So it is actually the physical system. So the second block now tell me about this one. Primary sensing element. Now it is the primary sensing element. So which one is the transducer in this diagram? Uh, 
the maybe maybe the observer observer is the transducer sir yes sir okay any other suggestions uh, piston rod so maybe we need the transducer sorry the spring sir well spring is not uh, the transducer here actually in this particular example there is no transducer because we are not converting one form of energy into another okay because we are only dealing with mechanical quantities if you if you see so while uh, while explaining what is a transducer i say that it converts energy from one form to another so it is not converting energy from one form to another so the conversion from pressure to force to force to motion you can say that it is variable conversion but it is not conversion of energy from one form to another so for this particular example there is no transducer because like i said for different types of application some of the blocks might be missing or some of the blocks might be doing multiple tasks okay so uh, moving on uh, what is the piston rod then it's a signal conditioner not a signal conditioner because what is the property of the signal conditioner it will modify the signal in some way it will amplify or attenuate or do some sort of filtering so nothing is done over here so you can just say that it is it is a transmission process or data transmission because it is just transferring the data towards the spring so after the data is transferred towards the spring then what is the role of the spring over here Put the pointer. If you consider the previous block, the role of the spring will be to will be to convert the variable type. So from force, you are getting motion. So you can say that it is the variable conversion, variable conversion block. And after that, that uh, motion is convert uh, transfer to the pointer and the pointer is moving at, 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 across the scale so you can say that the pointer and the scale is representing your data presentation system so from the data presentation system the observer can uh, observe the, the change in the quantity So how many of you are still sleeping and how many of you are following the class because maybe in this uh, home education or online education it is still very early for you right no sir Okay, so moving on uh, into the application of different types of measurement system. So the first one is monitoring of different processes or operations. So there are some applications where just monitoring is done. Well, suppose in our households, the energy meters that we use, those are used to continuously monitor the amount of energy used by the consumer in the substations the uh, meters uh, of uh, at the different panels are used to continuously monitor the voltage and current levels whether they are uh, in the 
uh, optimum condition or not, or over, whether there is any overloading. So for those monitoring purpose, the current voltage of the power is continuously monitored in a substation. Then in any weather bureau, so to uh, measure the different parameters of the weather, suppose humidity, temperature, then uh, these are the parameters. Uh, some uh, instruments are used just for monitoring purposes. And other than that, there are some applications where some controlling is necessary. Apart from just measuring the quantity, some controlling signal has to be actuated that will perform some task to control the output. So as you are doing the control system course in this semester, this sort of a dog diagram might be very familiar to you by this time. So this is a block diagram of which type of system? Closed loop or closed system. Yeah, it is, it is a closed loop system because you are taking feedback from the output and comparing it with the input again. So it is a closed loop system. Now, while you are taking the feedback, of the signal, you have to use any measurement technique or you have to use a transducer to convert the signal in the desired form so that it can be uh, uh, compared with the reference input signal. Okay. So, uh, to explain uh, this block diagram, we can use an example of the temperature control of uh, an air conditioner. So, for this sort of a closed loop system, we have to set a reference input and the reference input will be continuously compared with the output so that the difference or error between the two signals can be compensated using some control circuit. Now, for this example, we can say that the re reference input is the temperature which we set by our remote. That uh, for a certain air condition, we suppose we are setting 24 degrees Celsius in the remote control so that the room temperature can, can be controlled at 24 degrees Celsius. However, initially the room temperature might not be at 24 degrees Celsius. Maybe it is 30 degrees Celsius. So that uh, room temperature has to be measured using some uh, temperatures, measured or detected using some temperature sensor. So that temperature sen sensor will give the data of, of, uh, of, uh, of the room temperature initially and the difference between the two, the reference input and the out, uh, initial output will be uh, compared and an error signal will be generated. So that error signal will be amplified if it is necessary. If the signal strength is low, that will be amplified and that signal will be passed to a control circuit so that uh, some uh, operation can be uh, executed in order to minimize that error. So for this example, when there is still the temperature difference between the room temperature and the temperature set by the remote, the air conditioner will try to run the compressor and it, uh, in this continuous process, it will uh, again uh, uh, monitor the room temperature and generate the error signal and it will run the compressor as long as the, there is still some difference between the difference between the two quantities. When the error signal is uh, within a tolerable limit, then the air conditioner will turn off the compressor and it, it, it will only run the fans for some time. After that, 
when there is again significant temperature difference, the air conditioner will again turn on the compression. So this could be one, one, one example of, of the closed loop system. So basically in the feedback part, the signal has to be measured or it, it can be transferred into, uh, into the desirable form. So as a, in this sort of a system, our goal of the output is to reach the reference input. So we are striving for reaching towards the reference input. That's why the reference input is often also denoted as the desired output. So this is the output that we want. But initially the output is some other quantity. So by compensating the error in the closed loop process, the uh, the desired output is uh, tried to obtain. Now, this is a comparator circuit, right? But uh, in, in terms of electrical uh, circuit components, how we can implement the comparator? So in terms of block diagram, we are saying that uh, here we are comparing the two signals, the difference between the two signals. But suppose in terms of electrical circuit, you want to implement some comp comparating task, uh, task using some electrical components. So which component might be used? Open. Yeah, very uh, easy choice is the open. So you can uh, use the open to make a comparison and send some actuating signal depending on the difference between the two. Now further, another type of application can be considered to be experimental engineering analysis where uh, testing the validity of any theoretical prediction or that some experimental measurement has to be done. Then for determination of some system parameters or variables or performance indices, it has to be done. Suppose a new uh, device has been manufactured, so the manufacturer has to specify its uh, operating limits or uh, its uh, 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 optimum of uh, operating voltage or operating current. So to justify these things, some experimental measurements has to be done, or even for providing the name plate data, some measurement has to be done. Now, study of phenomena with uh, hopes of developing a theory. So often times uh, a theory is uh, uh, developed after experiencing some uh, experimental uh, uh, or after observing some experimental uh, relationship between different quantities. And sometimes uh, it is also necessary for formulation of uh, general empirical relationships. So it, this sort of uh, relationships are necessarily not, necessarily not justified by any theory, but in, in some sense, observing the change between two quantities through some experiments, a general relationship can be uh, uh, concluded. So those sort of relationships can also be uh, I mean, what should I say, established using different uh, measurement techniques. Okay, so there, there were supposed to be some BSCT students along with section B. Have they joined in this class? Yes, sir, we are all. Okay. Okay, so continue, continuing our discussion. Uh, so different types of error that normally happen in measurements, we can normally classify them, them into three categories, gross error, 
systematic error and random error so you all have encountered this sort of error while doing different uh, uh, lab sessions uh, in, 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 in your different undergraduate courses so just some formal different uh, some formal names for different types of errors so what are the gross error those errors are the uh, errors caused by the careless carelessness of the user or the observer who is actually using a particular instrument so uh, some some of the commonly made errors could be taking misreading of a particular value from an instrument suppose uh, in the instrument you are getting a reading of 28.25.8 amperes and you are uh, writing it to be 28.5 amperes just a, just a, a mistake which is silly mistake actually so other mistakes can be not considering the proper scale so you have seen that whenever you are using different types of meters they have multiple scales so you have to choose one you, you have to use one particular skill and according to that, that skill you, you have to take your reading so suppose uh, you are using an emitter which is having three different scales suppose one ampere 10 ampere 20 ampere three scales are available however the physical scale is actually denoted in terms of only one suppose zero to one so using this scale if you are operating at 10 million 10 ampere range then you have to uh, multiply the value what you whatever you are getting uh, from from the position of the pointer with the necessary multiplying factor so if the scale is denoted from zero to one and your range is uh, 10 amperes whatever value you are getting at of, of this displacement that you have to multiply with uh, a multiplying factor of 10 if the 10 ampere range is selected suppose if you are getting here 0 0.3 then in the 10 milliampere 10 ampere range your value will represent 3 amperes so oftentimes we make this mistake we don't consider the range which is set at at, at 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 the instrument now recording the data incorrectly it is actually you have made a data chart so suppose you are going to measure current and voltage so you are recording the current values in this column and the voltage values in this column so these sort of uh, mistakes while recording the data in the table that that can be also classified as the gross error and this can be easily minimized by being careful while doing the experiments and to further validate the results whether the data taken are correct or not the most suitable approach is to put the data in appropriate equations to justify the relation whether the relation between the different quantities are uh, consistent with the theory or not and taking multiple readings often helps us because if you are taking multiple readings one uh, there is anomaly in only one of one of the reading then you can say that maybe some mistake was there while recording that particular data now systematic error systematic error can be again classified into three subclasses which is instrumental error environmental error and ob uh, observational error so the instrumental error is due to any shortcomings or defects in the instrument or uh, any uh, wear and tears in the instrument for using the instrument for a long duration so most many instruments are electromechanical type so if you're using those devices for a long duration due to friction or some other mechanical losses there will be often uh, uh, often some degradation of the instrument which will reduce its efficiency so those in instruments will 
tend to generate some erroneous results. And also the misuse of instruments, because whenever you are using any instrument, the manufacturer actually provides you some guidelines how to use that instrument or how to keep the connection between the different points. For example, using the watt meter, you have an indication how to connect the potential coil and the current coil. So if you don't connect those two coils as per the instruction provided by the manufacturer, you are not going to get the intended result. So misuse of the instrument will also generate some results or it will even cause the machine to burn. And loading, loading effect, it is actually uh, uh, caused by the internal resistance of the particular instrument or a particular meter. So if the internal re resistance is significant such that the meter itself is uh, working as a load, then uh, it, it will give some erroneous data because the sole purpose of using any instrument is just to observe the changes across a particular element. So suppose you, you have a resistance across this resistance, you want to measure the voltage using a voltmeter. So this is your load. The purpose of using this voltmeter is to just measure the voltage across this load. If this voltmeter's resistance is significant enough that it is also working as a load, then there will be significant current division between the two branches and you are not going to get the intended voltage drop across the load measured in your voltage. Now, uh, environmental errors are caused by the changes in the physical parameters uh, in the surrounding environment. Suppose if there is temperature difference or pressure difference in the surrounding atmosphere or there is some uh, strain or uh, stress applied to a particular component that might cause changes in in the reading so you know that uh, resistances are uh, dependent on temperature if there is temperature variation the resistivity of the resistance will change so the, if the resistivity is changing the overall value of the resistance will also change so that is why often the resistance is uh, the value of the resistance is given with a certain tolerance limit, suppose 50 ohms plus minus 5 ohms. So this 5 ohms uh, change or error can can be there depending on the surrounding environment. And observation errors, these are actually similar to uh, the gross errors because they are actually generated. Uh, by the uh, mistakes made by the observer while uh, taking the data so such as parallax error or uh, uh, not considering the zero position of the pointer suppose uh, this is the scale from zero to ten suppose so the, initially the pointer is ideally supposed to be here located at zero but sometimes it happens that for using the instrument for a long time, the pointer gets shifted from zero, either to the right or the left. So how much it has been shifted, that has to be accounted while taking the reading. So if these things are not considered, the data will be, the data recorded will contain some error. And sometimes the analog meters provide the option to rotate the knob there is often an op present to mechanically adjust the pointer to the zero location so that this error can be minimized. So those things has to be considered by the observer, otherwise some observation and errors will be there. And apart from all this, uh, uh, some ra uh, random errors are there. I mean, if you are measuring the same quantity using the same device, if you measure three times, you will get slight variation. Often you get slight variation in the three, uh, three values. So these slight deviations, those are actually unexplainable by any theory or law. So those are termed as the random errors. So they, they are inherent in almost every system. Now, 
how errors are represented. So they are mainly represented in terms of the uh, absolute value or the relative value. So if they are represented in terms of the absolute value, that, that is nothing but the true value minus the measured value. So like I was saying that for a resistance, if uh, the value is de denoted in this way, so this plus minus 50 ohms is the possible absolute error that can uh, happen while you are using the uh, resistance depending on the surrounding environment. And the same thing you can represent in terms of relative error, which is nothing but the ratio of the absolute error to the true value. So the relative error is mostly represented as percentage. So the same thing can be represented as in terms of relative error, which is in this case 10%. And finally, uh, for some cases, the errors are also uh, specified in terms of this uh, term, which is sparse per million or PPM. So this term is mostly used for, I mean, when someone is dealing with a very large quantities. So, uh, for example, suppose uh, suppose uh, let me consider a temperature coefficient of resistance to be 100 ppm per degree Celsius. So, if the temperature coefficient of resistance is 100 ppm per degree Celsius, and we have a resistance which equals one mega ohms. So what is the possible change in this resistance due, due to five degrees Celsius change in temperature? So for five degrees Celsius change in temperature at the, as the temperature coefficient is 100 ppm. So 100 ppm parts per million of one mega ohms is actually 100 ohms. So for each one degree Celsius change in temperature, the value of the resistance is supposed to be deviating plus minus 100 degree, depending on the increase or decrease of the temperature. So this term PPM is often used to uh, define the errors uh, present, possibly to be present in uh, semiconductor uh, devices. I mean, uh, the defects in a semiconductor device or uh, the error that might be uh, present in the concentration le level of, while the doping is done. So of course, the concentration of the N-type dopants and the concentration of P-type dopants. So there's, they are normally of in 10 to 9 or 10 to the power 12 in these sort of ranges. So in those cases, as those are very high quantities, the error is often denoted in terms of parts per million. Now, I, I would like to finish this uh, class with the discussion of three more terms, which is commonly used in measurements, that is accuracy, precision, and resolution. So in most of the cases, Accuracy and precision, we consider them to be uh, indicating the same thing. But however, they, they have slight difference in their meaning in terms of measurement and uh, instrumentation. So what is accuracy? It actually indicates the closeness between the measured value to the actual value. So how, how close your measured value is to the theoretical value or the actual value you intend to obtain. So that is the accuracy. But precision is actually the closeness among a series of measurements of the same quantity. So if you are have measuring the same quantity multiple times, uh, whether the instrument is able to generate the same uh, result each time or not, that is actually indicated by the precision. Suppose uh, you can say that it is the capability of the instrument to reproduce the result. 
So Uh, so for, for, for a particular set of reading, if you get 5, 5.1 or 4.9, then you can say that uh, the instrument is giving you uh, more or less precise data because each time they are providing results which are close together. However, for the same quantity, if you get 5 once, then 6, then again 7, then again, you get 4.5. If there is this sort of anomaly, then you can say that your instrument is not precise and the results which is generated by that instrument, it, it, it cannot be uh, considered to be 100% perfect. So for, for a device to be 100% perfect, it has to be pre precise to generate to generate uh, each and generate the same value under the same conditions each time and also generate the value accurately which, which is to generate the value close to the actual value so when when an instrument is uh, having both these properties then you can say that the instrument is 100 percent trustworthy and the resolution is the uh, smallest possible change that can be observed by a particular instrument. So for, for a digital meter, if the meter is giving you uh, 5.0234, so it is giving you data to the four, four, up to four decimal places. So the smallest possible change that can be observed by these devices 0.0001 so that is the resolution of this particular device and if we are using a, an analog scale which is uh, 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 marked like this from 0 to 1 so it also has some multiple subdivisions so suppose this is uh, 0. If it, they are again subdivided in multiple uh, portions so each smallest division you can consider it to be 0 0.2 divided by 4 so you can say that 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 is the resolution of this particular analog scale and you can even sometimes we further approximate the resolution such as suppose the pointer is at this location then we can say that it is further one fourth of this smallest uh, interval so again we can consider it to be one fourth of this this interval so in this way we can define the resolution of different types of meters in terms of the reading they produce in their scale now to further uh, uh, explain the terms accuracy and precision these figures might be helpful so in 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 a dartboard in a dartboard we often consider i mean normally the bullseye is considered to be the most accurate hit so if someone can hit the bullseye continuously then it can be termed that he is most accurate in hitting in playing dark so the first case here it shows that all the points are randomly scattered around the entire board so it cannot be said that the individual hits are accurate and also as they are scattered around they are not clustered together it, it can be said that they, these are not accurate or precise as well so this first figure is not accurate and not precise the second one you can see that all the dots are close together so they are almost hitting at the same point so in this case the data is precise however you can see from the accurate position there there is still significant deviation so the data is not accurate in this case this one here Compared to the other two figures, the data are close towards the center. So they are 
compared uh, compared to the previous two figures they are more accurate however still they are uh, a bit scattered around so they are not completely precise this final figure shows you that each dot is located at the center and they are close together so you can term that these two to, to be highly accurate and highly precise so uh, basically uh, these are some of the terminologies that uh, and some basic ideas that i wanted to discuss most of the things you have experienced or know in some way or other but giving some formal uh, uh, idea about uh, all these things that was the main main uh, uh, goal of, of, of this lecture and for your reference you can take help from chapter one of AK Shaun and chapter two of the ethel so all the contents from chapter one is not discussed rather some of the things were picked to give you a basic idea and the discussion of different types of error those that has been uh, mostly considered from chapter two of the video bill so in in next class uh, we will discuss something about uh, statistical analysis of different types of error and then uh, we will uh, start discussion on a measurement of different types of uh, resistances so considering today's lecture if there is any question you can ask the questions now sir uh, from the next class can you be a bit loud i mean sometimes it's very hard to track you and you are not audible so it is very hard for us to uh, keep up the concentration level on the lecture uh, okay uh, i will try to do that so is it okay now can you hear properly now yes sir. Now it, it has to be louder louder yes. so now it is okay i think so. okay so actually the microphone is sometimes not uh, in the same place because i am writing or doing something else so i'll try to put the microphone in the right location uh, from the next class thank you sir we couldn't actually respond because we couldn't uh, track your voice uh, so we couldn't keep up the concentration level in this class so you could have said this in the middle of the class right then i would have adjusted the position of the microphone so that uh, it is more audible so that 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 was supposed to be said earlier right sir we somehow sir we have managed to hear sir it was no problem sir okay i'll keep it in mind from the next class if you have any questions you can ask or otherwise we can conclude today's uh, session okay sir yes sir okay so i assume no questions so i will upload the video recording on on the google drive link which is provided on the uh, google classroom so you can find it from there okay. so inshallah we will like assalamu alaikum sir assalamu alaikum sir assalamu alaikum sir